Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not none, you know, Madel. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing at this moment, right now. Go like, share us, do everything you need to do to help us grow because we're gonna continue giving you this content every single day. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Threads, you name it, we're on it. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast One Hundred and One, and you can find us on any platform. You can find a podcast. But if you want to see our visuals, you go to our YouTube channel, sign up for our membership. You see exclusive content if you have our membership. So thank me in advance. You're going to see a lot of stuff that you can't see nowhere else. Man, guess what, man? We got our girl back in the building, man. She needs no introduction. She's You love her voice. She no, she don't. She don't need no introduction, man. This one right here is special to me, man. Vita Loca is in the hey. building, man. Say, hey. listen, man, this ain't, no, this ain't nothing new for her. Mm -mm. She's used to being behind the microphone. She understands. Oh, yes, I, I have. I give great mic. <laughs> <laughs> Say so, man. I mean, we really like. I said I've been trying to get you back on here. It didn't go by the right. You know, I'm in the Instagram DM. I was DMing you. Yeah. So I don't be in my DMs that often because you know sometimes I like my eye get poked out when I get my DMs <laughs> for real. You get some crazy stuff. Oh yeah. Really? Oh, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah, a lot. And it's weird because I was getting like hella crazy stuff, mm -hmm. right? And then I got into a relationship, mm -hmm. so that slowed down. And I was like, damn, I kind of miss getting my eye poked out in the DMs. That just stopped. And then when I got out of my relationship, my eyes started getting poked out again. And I was like, okay. But uh, I don't go there as often as I should. Put it that way. Wow, it's a lot of opportunity in there too. Yeah. It's not just all bad, right? No, like, you're right. There's a lot of opportunity in the DM, but social media for me it became depressing. Break that down. I mean, and yeah. I, I, I'd like to hear it because people don't understand the extent. I'm old, so I remember when there was not no social media. Oh yeah, me too. There was party lines. There yeah. were yeah, where you call and you can pick up the phone on your neighbor's line. We listen in. Can listen in. Yeah, you know what that. I'm saying? This is old school. Yeah. So what I'm saying is you had to be at home to get that phone call. Yeah, you had to have a landline home mm -hmm. phone. Because yeah. we we're here we were we're before cell phones. There you go. And we lay yeah. I, I talk to my girlfriend on the phone all night long. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I go to I sleep, I say, you wait. You up? I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up. So I'm up. like like really like like how did it where did the pressure where, where did you see the most pressure in being on social media? What happened? Comparison. Comparison. Um, a lot of times you go on social media and everybody only posts their best moments. Nobody posts, you know, the downfalls except Tyrese. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and a few other people. I love people. Tyrese for that. I, I, yeah, I do, but, you know... Sometimes it's pandering. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I love transparency, but when you just when you're ready to fix it, it's not on social media. It's just not. Um, but I was in a moment where I would watch social media and continuously compare myself to people, how far along they are, what they have, you know, their energy. You got a man. You know, all these things that I'm wanting that I don't have, I see other people have. And then when I see it on social media, I go into a depression. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, yo, I just got to figure out how to not, you know, get on social media. Yeah. Because it was keeping me in a hole to where I'm not what I thought I should be because everybody else is where I wanted to go. So but you, then I got a question because um, with saying what you just said, all I'm thinking is that starts in your mind, right? And is there a difference when you go to work or you go on the road and you see somebody that you've been seeing for a long time and they're excelling or they're walking with their boo or they're walking? Different. How is that different? Because there's a because the energy is for real. Mm -hmm. So like I'm gonna get inspired. So I come in here and I see your podcast. Mm -hmm. I want this. Okay. Right. I want 3,000 episodes. I want 1,511 cameras. Mm -hmm. I want the the work ethic that you have. So when I come in here, 
it's an mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. it's a oh it's a like oh yes this is it this is what i'm going for but for some reason on social media through those waves through that picture through you don't know that energy you're getting you have very depressed people posting very happy shit mm-hmm. and sometimes the the depression is coming through the happiness and you are just you're feeding off of it. You're mm. you don't you have no control. Energy is never destroyed. It's always transferred. Always. You never can destroy energy. And the energy that someone is putting into something, I felt like I kept feeling it. I'm feeling everybody's energy except for mine. Because you're that type of person. Because I'm that person. Yeah. Because I could never understand that. I hear a lot of people talk about how um Social media is depressing. You're not the only person who say this. And that's why some people take a break from social media. But what I'm, I'm a thinker, right? And I analyze things a lot. And so when, even like I'm on social media and I like to click on inspirational stuff, like right. on inspirational right. stuff, mm-hmm. anything that's talking about God, I like it, comments on it, whatever. And I noticed that the more you like on certain things is the more those things the pop algorithm. up. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yes. if you're a person that is clicking on negativity or commenting on negative stuff, it's going to pop up more. And th- I would see that that is what would affect a lot of people more. But if you're clicking on more positive stuff, then you shouldn't be seeing a lot of that negative. I'm not even seeing negative stuff. Like, I can see uh, Toya. Mm-hmm. Uh, Regine's mom <laughs> with her new husband okay. and still get depressed. And still get depressed. Okay. Gotcha. You know, yeah, I can you. see um, Coach Stormy, you know, mm-hmm. who is a, a, a fabulous motivator, getting into her Bentley. And I could still get depressed for some reason because it's not my Bentley. Mm-hmm. So I had to just remove, like, I'm like, oh, just go, just stop. And then. You know, figure out what I need to do to get the things to that I things. want. Yeah. Did it help? Do what help? When you step back. Yes, it helps a lot. So I do, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I go on social media because that's my job. I got to go in there and figure out what to talk about every day on the radio. But I, do, I try very hard not to scroll. Now, if I'm going to um, post, I'll post. And another thing, so I, what I did, so I turned off where I could see how many likes other people get. Mm. Oh, that was hard for me. Because you weren't getting as much likes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so now, if you look through my Instagram, on my Instagram, it shows me nobody's likes. Everybody is just other. It's others. all others. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't see that. Cause I didn't know you can turn that off. I know yeah, you. I, I know you can turn you off. Turn your that off no, I don't turn it off because I were. Our platform is, I'm gauging it. That gives me motivation. Right. See, so, so, so it's different it for different everybody. Like, right. it's like, I'm going I'm to make this whole blow up. Yeah, it's different <laughs> for everybody. I had to figure out what worked for me. me that's it right. starts in your mind. And yeah. I, in everything that you do, because, and I always put it back to spirituality, because the more I read and realized, because every day, everybody is faced with um, evil thoughts, evil, everything. You know what I mean? So, how can you make your mind do right where everything comes out in a better way. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Because when people talk about depression or anything else, it starts in the mind. You have to think it first before you can act out. You have to know it. Right. You have to know you're depressed. You have to know what triggers you. Exactly. You have to know what it is that's causing you to feel this way. And trick your mind into thinking about it in a different way because you can see that same thing and you think of it in this way, but I can see that same thing you're thinking. And think of a different way. I have a different way. So how can you trick your mind to say, not think of it in this way? Let me reverse my thinking thought process. Where did this thought process come from? I don't want to. Is it because of somebody that I grew up, how I grew up? Is it because, because everybody thought process comes from a certain way Mm -hmm. because we all think differently, but where did our thought process come from? You see what I mean? So mm-hmm. how can you retrain your thought process to not think the way how you think right now? Right. By listening to your brain and what you need. Like for me, I'm much happier not knowing how many likes mm-hmm. you motherfuckers got. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I take it. I, I just be like, you know what? If I don't get a like or whatever, I be like, okay. 
Well, this, okay, I didn't do that right. I'm for the do that. I'm for the, tr okay, I got to change this. This is not working. I look at it as it's not working. See, and that's how you look at it. And I'm see, like, I if it's going to work this way, I need to change this crap because it's not working. And I don't want to get caught up on things. Because these people are really, it ain't just the people either. It's the algorithm. It's the, it's the advertising purchases you buy. It's a lot of stuff engaging others. Mm -hmm. Fake followers. Fake views. Bots. Fake mm -hmm. bots, all this stuff is happening in real time, and you have to be able to gauge it in a way to where where do you want to be, where do you want to fit, and if others is where you want to fit, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Like everybody mm -hmm. should be able to do what they want to do to enjoy themselves when it comes to social media. I believe and right. be able to grow, right? Yeah, and, and for, whatever helps. Yeah, for me, it is. I I don't want to do it for y'all. I want to do it for me. I get mm -hmm. it. So when I post something, it's not for you. It's for me, period. But it's a lot not. of people. But, do but that if I too. have like now, if I have a business and I'm posting and I'm trying to sell something and I'm trying to you know reach a mass people because I need to get this to them in order to sell something, mm -hmm. then I'm engaged. Then I'm going to be engaged in the algorithm. Then I'm going to be engaged in what time it. to post it. Who's going to see it? But like personal shit. Um, and, and whatnot and pictures neither. but I was so caught up you were so helping will, people though you were I, people working out I, there was a lot of well, stuff see, you I've did been, that helped a lot of depression. people but it does help people yeah, you've helped does. a lot yeah, of people because does. you're a big person now if it's just one person it doesn't matter about the count it's somebody that you touched you may not never know it but you be the local I was going through depression yeah, yeah even I when stopped. you were doing all of that you still was going through depression um, you look good doing I it I think so yeah, I think so. Are you still going I, uh, through depression right now? I'm still, uh, I still, I think, I think everybody goes through depression daily. Some yeah. way De depression is a ebb and flow. It's not like, oh, I was depressed in 2022, you know, or, and now it's 2023 and I'm not. I think depression is something that we, we battle, but we don't acknowledge every day. Um, I don't know what happened, but I just stopped. Oh, I got hurt. So I couldn't work out. That's what, okay. I stopped working out. So once I stopped working out, I couldn't get back into it. Mm. And that working out was a big deal for me. It, it like, helps. Oh my God. It makes you so feel better. So I used to, and also, so you know, remember when I was selling the Nutriburst, yeah, right? I yeah, I remember that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I, so I, got, I had I, some of that. It was pretty good. I would wake up every morning, swear to God, and I would get on Instagram Live and I would say, I expect great things to happen for me today. I remember. But that. I don't just say it. I really do expect do it. Because yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. You have to expect And did it help it. when you did oh that? Oh, my God. I was a whole nother person. Okay. And then I stopped. Because you got hurt. I and got once hurt. you got hurt. I couldn't work out. Couldn't work out. So then when I was able to work out again, I couldn't get back in. I couldn't get in the groove. I couldn't. The discipline was gone. I wasn't waking up and get you know and working out. I wasn't walking the dog. I remember I showed my my one of my exes. So you know I, I got two dogs, right? But I got a big ass dog, the Zeus that I be walking in the mm -hmm, morning. Mm -hmm. It was like, so I wasn't walking him, right? And it wasn't until I had to go in the backyard and clean up all that shit. I had a black trash bag, not the kitchen trash bag, but a black trash bag, full to the top. Of dog shit. That signified to that me you didn't, that you I wasn't, wasn't doing. I wasn't doing anything. I was stagnant, and I was I stopped. Mm -hmm. And that was very life opening to me. To and you didn't have because sometimes everybody is different. Sometimes people need friends around them or that group of people that or your son who can say, "Mom, let's go. Let's." Do. I don't. That's. I know. I have I have people, but like it. It seems to me, I'm always inspiring my friends. Mm. I'm the one that always says, "Let's go." I'm the one that says, "Let's work out." I know. I don't. There I don't have you. anybody calling me saying, "You know, get up, bitch." Are you okay? Let's go. Nobody. Mm -hmm. You. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say nobody. Yeah, because if not it, that I do people call right you? Now. Who calls you and check on you? Um. Friends you see what I'm saying? Because I don't call people a lot of times. But I don't time. have nobody calling like, me in the morning telling my girl, let's go work out at 6 o'clock, let's go. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you, you I, or do that. Or not yeah. that I, did, I didn't. When mm -hmm. I was going through that period, I right. didn't. 
I really right. didn't. I wasn't, and I don't blame anybody. No. It's just what was what what it was. But I feel like God, you know, he, I always say my motto is everything happens for a reason, and God put us through things for a reason. What is it that I need to see? Because I've been through certain things like that. Like right now, I'm I, I totally resonate where you know not working out, getting injured because on our anniversary, you know, we went out and I fell. On my anniversary, because <laughs> you were in a rest good. Of, and I wasn't drunk. Oh, but, and my heel that I had on was like a kitten heel. But you know how some of those places you Hold go on. to, you wearing kitten heels. Kitten heel. Why? Because I just <laughs> wanted that look at that Please. time. Comment but, below and say, bitch, don't wear no kitten heels no more. But hold on. So, she fell over on that floor. And so, I, hold on. It's, it, it's, you know, you, it's one of those steps that's like this short. It's yeah. not a, like a tall step. Yeah. And you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And so I was walking and didn't see it and fell. Mm -hmm. Thought it was a regular sprained ankle, whatever. It swole up, black and blue, all of that sort of stuff. I probably fractured, broke, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Didn't go to the hospital, nothing like that. So I didn't. I wasn't able to exercise. It still hurt even now. This is back in May. It happened. Mm -hmm. Couldn't work out. I'm 30 pounds heavier right yeah, now than yeah. what I was. So I totally understand. And not having anybody to motivate you to say, come on, let's work out. Because I don't. I'd be working on the computer. You see what I mean? And then getting busy with this and so forth. But You get lost. But seeing that none of your clothes can't fit you no more, that's, you know, it doesn't motivate. It, it makes you sad. Yeah. I'm not going to say depressed because... I'll be sad for that moment, for that day, and don't want to go nowhere, don't want to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And the next day starts, I'm ready to go do whatever because I put mm -hmm. on a job. You, know, you know how to shift your energy. Right. But at the same time, where I'm getting to is the fact that what I feel like God says to me in those moments is you can't always depend on everybody to make you get up, to make you do this, make you do that. You have mm -hmm. a mind of your own. You have a body of your own because at the end of the day, when there's nobody else there for you, you have to do for you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whether your kids, whoever, you know what's best for you. You have to get yourself out of that rut that you're in. Exactly. And get going. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And I, it's easier thought of, it's easier said, but harder done. Mm -hmm. But you have to somehow motivate yourself. Figure and it and out. when I say you, meaning me too, you, know, you understand what I mean? Because every day I tell myself, I gotta go back to the gym. I gotta go back to the gym. Or I gotta start working out. I have a garage full of stuff. I have a treadmill, I have a weight bench, I have all of that. I need to start working out. Jump rope, start something small. I don't have to go do a whole full boot camp workout, but start small. People think that they have to go in and do you a go whole- Go big and start it, No, yeah. that's where you get depressed. Discouraged. And discouraged. Yeah. Start one day just walking up and down the street. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at now, every day is, I'm gonna start Monday and don't start Monday. I'm gonna start Monday, but I need to start. I really do. I'm gonna start this Monday. <laughs> Said it again. <laughs> Said it again. <laughs> so you, you are still at ninety four five. How, how do you say that? The, how magic ninety four. Magic ninety four point five. 94 .5. Mm -hmm. Vita Loca Magic ninety four point five versus Vita Loca uh, ninety seven nine. The beat. What is the big? Versus. What is no? no what, what's the difference? Versus what's the difference in that Vita versus the Vita we talk to now? So it growth, is versus for me, growth, far as we, what's the I difference? I mean, you know, it's growth, age. Well, I, I take let me take age out because I remember Erica. <laughs> so when I the last time I talked to Erica about do, and I was telling her, you know, I turned fifty. That's hot. And I was like, I felt. Like, oh my God, I, I'm on a timetable now. Looking good though. But Stop I'm playing. A, I'm on a stopwatch, mm -hmm. right? Because when you turn a certain age, you feel like oh, you're looking, you're you're looking like how much left you got, you know? And that's understandable. And she said to me, she was like, Vita, but what if you didn't even know how old you were? How would you move? I said, you're right. Now my body gonna tell me my black ass how old I am <laughs> after I come home from the club and I can't get back up in the morning. But my mindset though was like, oh, I'm I'm running out of time, and so she was like, what's time? What's time? You don't who know who knows what time we have, but what if you don't even know the time? Then you just move accordingly, uh -huh. and so. I've been able to grow on 94.5, but 
for the simple fact I've, I'm able to inspire more people than I did on 97.9. And I know I inspired a lot of people on 97.9 just because I'm transparent, right? I'm single mom. I'm raising my son with the radio. I'm very honest and open about things. So I've had people come to me and tell me, you know, numerous things about how I helped them at 97.9, mm-hmm. just being who I was. But now at 94.5, I'm intentional about it. Mm. I'm not just doing it and y'all catching it. I'm actually throwing it to you. Got so it. I am moving in a different direction and wanting to just be more positive, wanting to to wanting people to feel the energy that I have and intentionally having that energy to give opposed to just being on the other station and just showing up and making people laugh. I had good times with you at 97.9 as well. Like you made me, you made my day. Yeah, I made a lot of people's yeah, day. Yeah, um, I made I, a lot of people's day. I, I got to ask you this too, because I said I was going to ask you about, you know, interviewing Mo3 during that time when back then. And trying to talk to him about that situation. Him and Beasy. I, yeah, I brought both of them. I want to hear about that because you can see it when you go back and start researching. You're in that history. Am you, I? As far as the video where he was at the radio station, he even put it in one of his songs. I just want to hear, like, what was that for you during that time? What did you see? What did you foresee? What did you try to, you know, implement? Both of them are my friends, right? And not friends like call up, like, what you doing tonight type shit, no. Mm-hmm. But black men that I cared about, that I loved because both of them were doing what they loved and making people happy. And my what I was just trying to do was, it, there's something I knew. There's something that I knew that they didn't know that there was no reason for this to be happening. Each person was looking at the wrong person. Wow. They were looking at the wrong people. Coming from the the first murder, mm-hmm. which started it all. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was the comedian. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, 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 Roy Lee. Roy Lee. They were looking at it all wrong. What they thought happened didn't happen. Wow. What they thought happened did not happen. So I was trying to get them to pull back because they were, everybody was wrong, period. Wow. And I can't talk about right. who, right. who but we you weren't still, gonna, we weren't gonna, we weren't gonna ask you that, but, but everybody was wrong. Everybody was wrong. And, and how much did it affect you when you seen what the Because I was. seen them as like my sons. Correct, correct. You know, I yeah, did, younger I seen them as my yeah. sons. Yeah, and they're young enough yeah, to be and, your and son. And if I have this platform, I have this big platform, 97.9, we're number four in the nation as far as markets, four or five, whatever. So we're big, we're heard. I don't want to see you young cats out here potentially giving away everything that you work hard for. So true over something and and rest in peace Roy Lee because I don't want to see any you know that that was not a great situation no one should have to die in this shit like that That's right. but y'all y'all are doing y'all are just you're going the wrong direction you're just going the wrong and I I was just trying to bring peace yeah but, that, but with oh, ego yeah. cuz men have ego and with pride and misunderstanding cuz most disagreements or more most arguments most murders or anything like that is caused by something that could simply be resolved with just a good conversation mm-hmm. and putting that ego to the side right and that's you know what, what i mean and i felt like that's what i was trying to do like trying to talk to them in a way like vita way mm-hmm. you know the funny love you care for you nigga come on like i love a good drug i love a drug dealer i love an aggressive man i love that life mm-hmm. but i also know when it's being destructive and when it's when it's destroying who you are or destroying your brand or potentially destroying the people around you you know because the, the energy of both of these men bur- um, push off to the energy of their crew. Exactly. And usually the crew 
is the ones that make the, the worst moves. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones, you know, those, they, they take the energy of what's going on and they ride with it because they don't themselves. have the hits on the radio. They don't have that, the, the label in their ear telling them, you know, Hey, yo, calm down. You, you, you got on you you up, you up, you know, everybody's up, everybody's hype. And then those young men go home and they still hype. Wow. They still hype. They still want to kill somebody. Yeah. You go home and you're like, shit, I need to write this rhyme. Or the label just told me I got to show up to Arkansas tomorrow. Oh, now you got other things to think about. But now you got your crew out here only thinking about that shit. Wow. And and I was just trying to let them know that we got to be leaders. Did you, did you when you, as far as Raleigh, you, you got to meet him or I no? Roy. How was that as far as his comedy? And what do you think he would be today if he'd have kept going? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but the way the internet a, started. Oh, oh, yeah. You see well, what I'm saying? Okay. The internet he, he, started, would definitely, he would definitely be a country the wing. The internet, yeah. He, would, right, he was a country it, wing. Yeah. He was a country wing. And shout out to country wing. Yeah. Because he got that new Netflix special. Yeah. Did we you watch it? it? We, we watched, watched it. Not yet. Not we watched yet. it on the not first yet. day when it came. Yeah. We big country wing supporters. Yeah. So he was definitely on the country wing path. For sure. Mm-hmm. Wow, and that's sure. big. That's big to say because, and now that he, you know, you look and he has these kids and a lot of times you hear the people come on and say that they trying to do stuff to help the kids and trying to do stuff to do things for the family because nobody's thinking about Roy Lee's family, you know. He's gone. He, them kids still here. Mm-hmm. His fa- it it hasn't been long. Too. Mo mm-hmm. 3 the same way, but Mo, Mo 3 left. Too. He left something behind. You know what? You I don't care what you leave behind. You're gone. Yeah, I get it. As a as a child. No, I get that part. As a child. But when you mm-hmm. have no financial, you know, or you don't know the financial stability of these people, once you take away the main breadwinner from the family. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You know, and I I, I, I want to get a t-shirt made that says, stop GoFunding me when you die. Damn. Mm. Yeah. Get your shit together now. Fucking life insurance is real. Real. Oh, yeah. Life yeah. insurance is real and it's here. And it's for us. Stop GoFunding me when you die. That's hard. That's real truth. That is like we act like we ain't gonna die. Like nigga, everybody gonna die. Every no one's going out alive. Uh-uh. Everybody's going to die. Stop GoFunding me. And they when don't even go. have to. And they don't have to do life insurance on themselves. Their mama, daddy, somebody can put it. life insurance All of on it. them. All of it. You can get life insurance. You can put life insurance on your whole fucking family. Right. And yourself. Right. Like, stop doing that. That I don't I'm tired of that GoFundMe when you die. Oh, you didn't know you're gonna die? You didn't know you was gonna be gone? That's you think a lot of it has to do with being illiterate, it, people it's just not what having we, the what knowledge. We've been taught. Right. Yeah, we're, we haven't been taught that and and we're taught to spend our butt on money on bus downs. And Chargers and Hellcats. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and make, make me a song about, I mean, I know my booty hole's brown, but my life insurance <laughs> policy is great, too. Let you me know? ask I want to go I like back. It. I want to go back to the day, because I knew you had a connection with Mo3. You had interviewed him. That day that he, you, you seen that he had gotten killed. Like, 11.55 in the morning, you hear about it. You already interviewed this guy. Was it unexpected or you was like, dang. I oh, knew. I knew he was going to die. He almost. You knew he, he was going to die. He was walking around like he wanted to die. Wow. Why do you say that? Because he was just walking around reckless, like one smoke with everybody. You can't live like that. Yeah. Mo3 to me looked like he was ready to go. But how long was he doing that for? It's not like he just started been doing, doing that. that. He's been doing, doing that, that for since long. Roy Lee died. Mo3 was on oh. one, you know, you saw. Yeah, I see Yeah. That. Yeah, so they was really, yeah. they was out there in them streets, yeah, yeah. Out, outside, as the song said. Yeah. They really was outside. Yeah, he was just doing things that just looked like a brother who wasn't really. He reminded me of Malcolm X. Wow, that's all. In a sense of, I want, I, I, I want justice. Mm-hmm. Wow, at any cost. At any cost. Yeah. How do you think it affected the city after? Well, it's weird because the city was split. You know, you half the city was over there with BZ and, you know, mm-hmm. and Trap, and the other half was over there with Mo3. So that counted and, and this people, yeah, So it was, kind of split. Split. Yeah. it was already split. The city was already split even yeah. before that. Yeah. I just always, because I, like I said, you know you were, you're I, in a song I, with these I, guys. I'm happy that no one had to die after, after. Mo3. Wow. That's big. That's what I'm more concerned about. Nobody else dying. 
I don't want to see anybody else gone. I don't mm. want to see Trap gone. I don't want to see BZ gone. I don't want to see any of their foot soldiers gone mm. for stupid shit. That's stupid shit. You moved on and went to 94.5, right? Like, like you know, it's really not that type of music that no. they played before. How big was that? How much of a change was that? That, that was hard at first. <laughs> 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 you know, I still turn it up to Jeezy and Gucci in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I get to work and I'm losing the earth when it motherfucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I'm 50. You know, that so that change atmosphere. was going to have to come eventually, mm. you know. Um, and it actually just solidified some longevity for me. You know, when I was on 97.9, I lied about my age all the time. Like, no one knew how old I was. Really? Wow. No one. Wow. Cru ask Cruz. Cruz never, Jay Cruz never knew how old Jay Z was. Like, no one knew how old I was. I, for a, a brief period of time, I didn't know how old I was. You stopped counting. I yeah. stopped. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I literally stopped. Yeah. I did not know. Someone, how old are you? 30. Uh, <laughs> 30. Well, yeah. So, so 32, 3 <laughs> 32 was my go-to, yeah, right? Like, that's my, 32, you know? Yeah. That was my go-to. Uh-huh. Everywhere. Uh -huh. And then, when it came time to like, bitch, how old are you? Uh, you had to go calculate. I don't know. <laughs> I remember one time, swear to God, babe, I swear crazy. to God, I had to write down the year mm -hmm. and then figure out what year we was in uh -huh. and figure out how old the fuck I was. I got you. I so I did. understand. I had to do that. That's crazy. No, it's but, not. But in that industry, in the you know the industry that I'm in, no one wants to hear no old bitch on a hip hop station. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, like I, I, my age was one thing. My energy was another. Yeah, and that's how I was able, able to, to just pass. To right. pass. Right. You know, but now I'm like, do I, I don't want to have to pass? It. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to like that because. I need to like that. If I'm going to like a song, I'm going to like it because I want to, not because I don't want to seem like I'm out the loop. Type you want to be you. You want to be you regardless of age, of how turn up or how whatever. Just be you. Find out who you are. Because I would assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, with you have to be all of this, have you ever looked in the mirror and be like, okay, so who am I now at this stage? Excuse me. Like you actually lose yourself? I lost myself before you. Yeah. Like where you didn't know what you love because you try to pretend or try to be somebody else that you don't even know if that's really you? I'm gonna tell you when I didn't know who I was. So I am a addict, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a 20 plus year cocaine habit. Right. Right. When I finally went to rehab and left the cocaine behind me, I didn't know who I was. Mm. I didn't know. Cause you were a walking zombie that whole time? I wouldn't say zombie, but I was dependent okay. on certain things for my, uh, my attitude, everything. I depended on that to, to control who I was, my mm -hmm. attitude. Like if I would go out, if I go, would go out and a guy, I got a guy's number and he didn't call me the next day, I'd do some coke. And I forget about it, mm. you know, or I, I had reasons to do coke. I had like 57,000 reasons to do coke. <laughs> oh, shit, the telephone bill came. I need some coke. <laughs> and it, made you forget, it made you forget all about it. I had every reason in the world to do coke every day. So how right? did you adjust after coming out of rehab and fig trying to figure out, okay, who am I now? How can I um, deal with these situations without was you know turning to it's this it's just a god god yeah it's a daily you know people go back you know what I'm i know yeah people go back so it's a daily it's a daily thing like, how long have you been clean seven years seven mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and and have you been in the room where somebody brought it in and no so you still clear you changed friends no you changed i didn't get high with my friends you oh, this was just by yourself. Oh, I was a secret 007. So cocaine. nobody knew. When I went to rehab, I had a, I had close friends that didn't even know that I was. They're like, what are you there. doing? Yeah. So when you the came, the friend out, that picked me up to take me to rehab didn't know I was a coke addict. So what was their reactions when you told them? The fuck? Like, yeah. Like what are you doing? Fuck? 
Well, I was good. Like I hide it. I I was good at hiding it. Yo, you Very came bad. up the other day on the show because I uh, Twisted Black was in here. He did his nose like what that. The fuck? Oh, every time I do my nose like this, uh-huh. I'm like, oh, people gonna think I'm on coke no, again. That was, and that's what I told him. I said, and she was like. Well, you just kidding? He was like, "No, I'm not kidding. I, I it probably caused a cold." Because he used and I to said, be. That's, you, and, I, and then I checked her. I said, "You should remember oh, that." Oh, I have no. Wait a minute. No wait a minute. Cartilage. I said, mm-hmm. "You should remember that because uh, uh, Vita. Vita spoken about that on the show." Oh yes, I when I was up. here and my nose was running, I was like, no, "Oh yeah, yeah, But I brought that up to tell her she should have remembered that when he said that because you had already educated so her. So we on said that. it on the show. On and yeah, when my nose runs, I'd be like, "Oh shit, everybody gonna think I'm on coke again." So the wow. so the coke messed up your cartilage. It destroyed yeah, I have a all hole of it. up there, like mm. you know, it's sitting up there and it just burns your your cartilage out. Mm. You know, like if I could have kept going, my nose probably would have collapsed. Mm-hmm. Does it affect your smelling um, senses or anything like that? No, Mm-mm. no. Wow, well, not that I know. I, you know, like like you, you've interviewed a lot of people. A lot of people have come to stations that you've worked at. What is your most interesting, I guess, interview that you can remember? Something that stands out. Have anybody, like I asked other, okay, so have I anybody ever story. walked out on you? <laughs> that sounds like a, that like a one yes. Per, one person. Like, Who? But this was on a podcast. It wasn't on the. Oh, okay. okay. And I don't even know if he counts. Oh, okay. okay. Well, we might not give him no say? shine. I just kept getting his name wrong. Okay, so oh, his, name is, his name is Four from uh, Black Ink Crew. Okay, okay. Four Play. Four. P H O R, right? Four Play, they call it. I, he, he, I follow four. him on Instagram. Did he do all that crazy stuff? I kept calling him Thor. Oh. Because. Thor? Because I'm a big Avenger fan. I am too. <laughs> Bring the hell. What'd you call him? Bring the Thor. Hell. Thor. So I kept calling him Thor. I mean, because it wasn't a disrespect. It was because I kept seeing four in my brain. Mm. So when I'm talking, I think it's my first time ever meeting him. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't follow him. So I'm trying to remember four, four, four. So rem- and remembering his name constantly is put it P-H-O-R with Thor, so. in my mind. Right. I'm dyslexic. Right. Mm-hmm. So the P H O R was turned into T H O R, literally in my brain mm-hmm. when I'm talking to him. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, Thor, and he, and so I might have said it three times, and he got angry and just walked out of the interview. He didn't say anything. He said, he's, he said, you fucking with me. He was mad because I called him Thor like three times. Mm-hmm. He just walked out. That was the, but it was a good interview prior to that though. Right, because we it was good, right? I, I mean, I thought it was yeah. great, you know. How long ago was this? Oh, so maybe a little over a month ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that, right? I, I, I have good interviews because I give good energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you give great energy. I give good energy. So my interviews, I've never had an interview that I'm like, uh, fuck that shit, you know, because I give good you energy. It, you oh, you gonna energy. take my energy. Mm. I'm not taking your That's energy. That's it. You're taking I love my it. energy. That's where I because, get down. But you think about it like, and no, just these artists, when they come into the game, they're not prepared for all that shit. They just want to do music. Mm-hmm. They just want to make music or they want to do comedy or they just want to act. They don't want to interview. That part, that interview part is not what they think of when they want to be who they but are. But it's something they have you to do. You know, like Little Dirk is not like, yo, I can't wait to get interviewed. He doesn't do that. It doesn't happen like that. Right. So when they come to you, you have to have to have a sense of, I understand. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. I understand. And I'm going to try to make this the best situation for you i remember mary j blige my first time oh my god i love mary my first shout time, out to mary who j does blige. It? my first time meeting mary right or interviewing mary was back when diddy was doing making the band okay and back when he had them motherfuckers walking across the bridge to get the cheesecake yeah right? yeah yeah so mary's here she was doing the super bowl she was a uh, um she was the uh act for the super bowl and when she came in she was like let me write your name down so i won't forget your name well, I said, well, shit, let me write your name down so I won't forget your name either. <laughs> and she laughed. She did what you did. She just laughed. Of course, I'm not going to forget Mary's name. Like, you just four, having a good time. Like, four. <laughs> but I was having a good time with her. And um, so, breaking that ice with her about whose name and what. She, we, it was like one of the best interviews ever. We were talking about Diddy, and we was like, shit, 
I would walk to Jersey to get some cheesecake yeah. if you're going to help my career right. and if you're going to put me on. Yeah. I, you know, the entitlement was so crazy. Mm -hmm. So we had a great, at, great conversation just about, you know, um, the business and coming up and, and not being so entitled and working for what you got. Wow. And then, but my favorite That's interview. That's a big interview, though, man. Stop playing. Mary J. Blige, I'm a, you know, I, I like Sweet Morning Do. I took one look, look at you. you. And, and it was plain to see you were my destiny. That you see that? Oh, that is the best love song of all time. That is the greatest love song. When I get married, I swear to God, I want That's that to be I my mean. first song. I don't need no Kenny Lattimore. I don't need no Jagged Edge. I just need Mary. Mary hey, That's man. gonna be my song. It I, seems so united, man. It's a unified song, baby. I was so <laughs> mad the other day. I'm not even gonna say mad, but disappointed. Disappointed. Almost jealous a little bit when I looked on social media and saw that you got an Ice Cube interview. What? Oh, he's my friend. Three on three. Because we wanted him over we here so bad. Him here, but, and yeah, I got partners linked to him. Friend. I just didn't call him. I'm when, 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 when Big Three comes back, I'll invite y'all to the studio. I need to meet him. Rock out with, with him. him. Yeah. But he's my friend. Like He's a friend friend. Like We see each other. Fuck is up. That's like he, yeah, he take my drinks out of my hand. Like, That's hard. Catch me, give me that drink, bitch. You, want drink. you know, we, we he's a good friend, That's a, 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 a great person. Um, I'm gonna tell you my okay. So, two of my favorite would be one Michelle Obama. What? Wow. That was one of my favorite because it was like where y'all was at. It was a phone interview. It Still, was like, it was when Barack was running for president the first first time. time. Whoa, how yes. was that? But that energy still oh come my through. Oh, God. She was so amazing. I asked her, what music do she listen to? It was in her CD player, you know, and she just was so just genuine and, mm -hmm. and just, Man. just her energy was, um, was infectious. And I was like, this is great. I love it. I love this. And then my second one would be Jay-Z. Wow. Mm. That also was a phone interview. So I have a little Jay-Z story, right? I'm saying this Jay-Z story. Okay. So when the Jay-Z is not calling you, it's the re label, right? right? Yeah. So they're like, okay, so here we got Jay-Z on the line. Um, don't ask him for any drops. You got eight minutes. Let's go. Right. Wow. And drops are like, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, drop. Yeah. So I said, okay, cool. So we get on the we get on the and we're we're talking and I keep saying already. So he says all already, already. Remember all we was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. already. Shout out to Bobo. Bobo say he brought all, that to Dallas. Bobo, 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 Bobo say he brought it. Thank you, Bobo. Bobo Luciano. <laughs> Bobo already. <laughs> so we we you know we're doing the interview and I I keep, I keep saying it obviously because Jay Z is like he stops and he says, what does that mean? <laughs> I said what he said already what does that mean and I was like oh it means I like agree with okay you. Yeah. yes yeah. Mm -hmm. slangs up there is totally gotcha. different I said it's a southern thing you know and it was fairly new yeah yeah, back that's, then. yeah. so I was like yeah it just means like cool you know uh, that's good already <laughs> <laughs> already so then at the end of the interview, they said, don't get a drop. But I did. I oh, said, you went on got the I, I drop. I said, say, Jay-Z, could you give me a drop? Because it was a great interview. Mm -hmm. We laughed. You know, we had a good time. Was it really eight minutes or did he go Oh, longer? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no you idea. You are not watching I the time. I in the zone. <laughs> so he did the drop. He That's said, old. yo, this is Jay-Z uh, here with my girl Vita Loca. And then he's with 97.9 to beat. And guess what he said at the end? Well, already. Already. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the end though. So then months, maybe almost a year later, I'm listening to some new music he got, right? Don't tell me he put it in there. <laughs> he got a whole song that'd be like, I'm in the club already. 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 And then oh, he boy. said already through the whole fucking song. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. And it, it, was, it was a B song, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. one on the radio or nothing like that, but that nigga, he that took nigga the already that and, and put it in, took it in the song. But you felt good, didn't you? Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, already. 
<laughs> man, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's the way he'll that's do a that. Good story. I know he put phase on in that song. We interview phase yeah. on. He put phase on with the phase on love. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he did he that. He cold with the wordplay. Mm -hmm. That boy bad mm -hmm. with the wordplay, man. But I think but hold that on, would I gotta ask you this question. Since you said that, because we asked. Um, someone recently on the show and he mentioned okay between Bumby and Jay-Z who would be the best lyricist she for you she not for from me, Texas for you yeah. but she she listens to music yeah it yeah, would yeah. be Jay-Z that's for her you. opinion Why? not just because I'm not from Texas I mean I'm really from Texas I've been here that long oh no no you're not from Texas but Jay <laughs> I know where you're from you I'm told not. me last time and I will <laughs> say it don't <laughs> <laughs> but why Jay-Z over Bunt I, I'm into drug dealers and I'm into like Timberlands and I'm into that East Coast vibe and I'm into gangster shit. I'm into almost killing niggas. I'm into Wait a like, minute. Wait a minute. Don't don't play cause you know, uh now we got now you got me running from the feds, a pocket full of stones. That's all came from UGK. Stop playing. And we are from the South and we have sold drugs, so don't play. <laughs> don't, don't. And, and we get it out the valley. It's a hoop. We get it out the, the valley. That's right, so don't play. <laughs> Yeah, but do Jay not play. Yeah, but Jay Z. And Jay ain't sell no drugs. No, yes, he did. He, Whatever, he had man. Maryland on lock. Oh, well. he had Maryland and Virginia Her on lock. And uh, Mr. Servo say he did. Mm -hmm. Faze on love. Faze love. Say he didn't. He did. He did no, he had Maryland on lock. He the the home of the turp in them. He Jay Z was selling drugs all the way down the East Coast, like well, from D from from New York to D C to Virginia. Like he had a whole operation, and, and I'm not telling. I'm not snitching that boy name, because boy, he talks oh, about man. it in his music, mm -hmm. right? He talks but about. But a lot it. of people lie in their music. Jay Z don't lie in his music. <laughs> He told you he got a big dick and it's crooked. Oh, damn! <laughs> he did. It's like a Coke bottle. But he don't lie. lie. But, he don't lie. But who knows? Unless they he see doesn't. it. He doesn't. It's the energy. It's the energy. And I don't think UGK lies either. No. No, okay. they don't. At all. No, they don't. But I'm Pimp a big C, UGK fan. Pimp C was more of a drug dealer than Bun B. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I'm I not am. going there. I'm but, not going but, there. But, they was together since they were like yeah, teens. Yeah, but I think Pimp was the ringleader. I'm not saying that. You know Bun, mean, no, because Bun was more quiet with it. He was oh, more in the, the streets. One. Yeah, you can't play it like that. You never know around this hole because it's dope everywhere. I, I this heard Texas. There, I heard there's dope on them Trill Burgers. <laughs> them well, look, I, 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 one. He won the greatest burger in the world, hey, Craig. Hey, the world, Craig. <laughs> hey, that the that fucking world. world. Beyonce, I think oh. Beyonce got her first Trill Burger last night. Her and Jay-Z. They were together last night. Have you had any burgers? It's amazing. You have it? Have you had it no, yet? No, I'm just going on what I heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ate it. It was good. Actually. I saw him, no, for real. I saw him. I, I know Bun B and I know mm -hmm. his wife, Queenie, but I saw it on... Um, Everybody Good I saw him on Good Morning America. He was. he was. And I was so happy for his transition yeah. to whatever what he's doing right I'm now. I'm loving it, too. That transition is amazing. Mm -hmm. Everybody isn't able to just transition. Like, it's hard, right. you know? Yeah. It's, it's, Doing uh, rhyming and rapping is like selling drugs. Mm -hmm. It is. It's it's fast money, mm -hmm. you know. And once you're like, okay, I don't want to do this that much anymore. You gotta find gotta another find avenue. Else. Another niche. And his transition is just fucking phenomenal. You mentioned, and I don't want to jump subjects too much, but you mentioned Erica Badu earlier. That's who I'm loving. Hey, I love the way she is. She'll never go nowhere. She is a staple in Dallas, like at the world. What? But mm -hmm. but for us, like she always. Oh, she's represent, the queen of Dallas. She represented. Yeah, she's the queen of to Dallas. the core. I mean, even so much so, a DOC say, I say, where you met? Her? Where you see her the next time? When she was walking down Lamar. Mm -hmm. Make it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but he said she, that's why he's seen her the next time when they, I'm like, before, when you asked about that question of mm -hmm. them having a daughter, like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Like, how was it, how is it with you and her, like, when you interview her, how's the energy? Because I hadn't got the interview, but I definitely can thrive off of, Erica she seems fun. It's very fun. She's a comedian. It seems that way. Yeah, she's, mm. a, she's straight up funny as fuck, but she's also very spiritual, so. That's yeah. the part I like. Yeah. She she's be lighting up candles and, and stuff. That's spirituality. That she, she will up, lighting up incense and shit. Yeah, the she? ones that smell like her pussy. What's up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. She talks yeah, about for real. that. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had them any yet, but I swear to God, when I get my hand on her pussy incense, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> It's you don't because you remember when she said she I think she had cut up all her underwear and she didn't want to wear any underwear anymore. Do you remember I don't that? Know. 
Yeah, she had posted that. Who they got mad at her the other day? It was somebody beefing with oh academics. Academics went oh, in on yeah, her. Yeah, I day. don't even. I don't. Yeah, about he, that he same thing. He doesn't deserve. He's irrelevant. To, his you know, his name and her name doesn't deserve being the same in conversation. The same, the same right. sentence. That's crazy. Because she gives off positive energy. Her her mission is for everybody to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. His mission is every for everybody to feel a certain way as well. Damn, that's a hard call. Total opposite other way. ways. Mm -hmm. The other way. Yeah, I don't give him I don't give him light. What do you think about all of the bloggers and the podcasters and the influencers? It's what the world's supposed it's what the world needs. Like we need, you know, directions to go. Yeah. So you can see who people are. You know? If we were all robots and all did the same thing then it'd be right. no truth in the world because everybody's just doing what they're supposed to do but what they think they're supposed to do but i like the fact that people are doing what they do because mm -hmm. it gives you a chance to make a decision you came off and you you say you you do a podcast and the name of it again is what inspirational bullshit inspirational bullshit okay but then you do radio too what's the big difference for you when you're dealing with either uh, on the pot of course because you know a podcast you can cuss motherfuck <laughs> <laughs> you know can't cuss on the radio you so know you and then i'm coming in between songs and then i'm you know you're only getting like 30 seconds here a minute here 20 seconds here you know it, radio it, you have to learn how to push who you are in a short time the radio in a short time that's a craft you know it's when you're in the easy. morning show you got time right you mm -hmm. got time in the morning okay you got time but when you're not in the morning you ain't got a lot of time mm -hmm. and a lot of times all you hear is about what radio got for you we got tickets on the way we got the event over here we got your song coming up Lil Wayne did this uh you know Ice Cube did that um da -da -da did this but I want you to know who I am I don't want to just bring you information and you don't know who the fuck I am I'm like yeah um Jamie Foxx might have did this but my fucking son did this okay like I talked about huh you be killing it you been like that from day I one I put my son business out I love the, it I put my business it's my business that I put on the radio I feel like you can't come on the radio and just tell everybody else's business and not tell your own you know you gotta people want to know not want to know but they want to feel who they're listening to. You know what I just thought about, and I didn't ever ever think about this before. You've been branding your son before anybody's been doing that on social media. Because now, as soon as a person have a baby, they have an Instagram page for this child, mm -hmm. and you see this journey. But you've been doing that for him on the radio for the longest. And you know what? It wasn't really a brand. You know what it was? It was I'm a single mom, right? His father is not in his life at all dylan does not know what his dad looked like never okay. met him mm. don't want once, to meet him once it was date rape mm. okay. so he saw him one time and then i guess he couldn't face his what he did and he's just left right and that was when he was not even one mm. so he don't know what his daddy looked like does that affect him of course it does does he well, have I mean, you ever spoken to him like does he want to if it, i don't know have I you ever asked him, him? Hap, yeah he's of age i told him what happened but you asked him do you want to know who he is where um, he is i let that? him talk to me about it uh, he's in therapy I, I, he I, is in he, therapy I take, he's had three different therapists um when he's ready he's ready okay. i just when he's ready i want him to be in a place where he can have somebody to talk to besides me right you know I, if i could uh, like but hold on before i forget how i brought dylan to the, the 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 you know the front was my mother is his best friend mm. right so it was hard to get advice from her because she was always team dylan right she dylan could do no wrong for her grandma mm -hmm. so that's how it's supposed to be so i would i parented dylan with the city Got it. That's big. Their advice. That's huge. I parented Dylan. So the city was the dad. The city was the dad. Got remember it. when that Dylan stole that money in my purse? Yeah. I remember that mm -hmm. story. <laughs> and I brought him to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and I asked everybody to please call in mm -hmm. and talk to Dylan. How many calls did you get? A lot. Mm. And he sat down there and we listened. I had people come up. I had people come up to the station to talk to Dylan. And he sat and listened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was parenting Dylan. 
I love that. That's huge, man. Yeah. God's giving you a gift, man. Have you talked to Steve Harvey? Not since. Remember that time I told you? I told know you what you told me. <laughs> 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 this nigga got good it's advice for a minute, it, right? Just, just, just for a minute, go. And I was like, bitch, who is you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just asking. I knew that was yeah, going to be a good Yeah, we just didn't know if, <laughs> if he came around. <laughs> <laughs> he don't even live here anymore. No, he so, don't. Yeah, he don't. I don't even see him. But yeah, you hear it. The only thing you hear now is him and his wife have a problem, but they say it's fake. I it's all kind of stuff. I think that's fake. I think it is, too. He's fussing about it, too. Oh, he's fussing about it. He's on there. I seen him get real. And he don't really. They've been saying that for a while but he hasn't acknowledged it until now because he didn't need to you yeah, know yeah. he didn't need to bring no light to that how did you feel about when you heard that Jeezy and his wife was getting a divorce I was like yeah Whoa, wait yeah. a minute you like that that's what they said everybody welcome back we got it back welcome back are you? Is that a thing for real? You what? wanted him back? Come on now. Damn. We love that black man. Black women don't play by black women. Black women love Jeezy. And, uh, and look, Jeannie Mai, I'm sorry for you, boo. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, but we I'm sorry. I'm looking at all the cameras. No, Bitch, I'm as sorry. long as he, ha he, if he was happy, he's but, happy. I mean, she's devastated. Yeah. Because they say she didn't see it coming. But yeah, because he's the one who filed black the Black women all over the world was like, oh, that nigga back. We got him back. Some 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 women was willing to get back on drugs again just to get some coke from him. <laughs> like, I ain't need coke in eight years, but bitch, I'm gonna buy some from you, snowman. Come on back. I'm going well, welcome back, nigga. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> but that is you. I man. said, well, I said now his next single should be My President is Black and So Is My Wife. Damn. <laughs> this girl crazy. So is my wife. That's what I want to see. Oh, the lighter, lighter note, man. Like Vita <laughs> Loca. Like who? If, pe if like you look back at at time, like and somebody had something to say about Vita and she wasn't there to speak for herself, they was gonna do a documentary. What would you want that documentary to kind of represent? Her light, the way she made people feel, the way she, you know, just. I'd be asking God. I'd be like God. Don't worry about me, but allow me to make somebody else feel good. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what I'm got going on. Just use me to make somebody feel good. That's it. I want to make people feel good. My my foundation. I have a a foundation. It's called Vita Loca Smiling Faces. Mm. And children are my my soft spot. Children. So. Vita Loca Smiling Faces was created because I want to see children smile, period. No matter what they're going through, I want to see you smile. Mm -hmm. You know, kids know how to communicate what's on their mind, but not what's in their mind. Oh, okay. You know, they're going to tell you, Mama, that, she fat. Or Mama, why they, you know, in the store, oh, Mama, why they look like that? Why they eye closed, you know? But they're not going to tell you, Mama, I'm hurting. Okay. Got it. You know, I'm emotionally hurting. Something's going on. They don't even know how to do that. Because they don't understand. They don't know how to do that. And they right? don't understand what's that, happening it, yeah. to them. So what we do is once a month, my foundation goes to the homeless shelter. And we throw a birthday party for the kids that live in the shelter. Mm -hmm. If you have a birthday in that month. So we just had one yesterday. Mm. So if you have a birthday in September, which was yesterday, we give you a personalized gift, you know, gift cards, trains, you know, because the kids are like this. The, you got what age? Kids. What age range? Kids are. Up. What range you deal with from like All the kids up the to shelter. 18, nine, the 18, because yeah, yeah. shelters only carry up to 18, right? Well, no, these shelters For have children. families in them. Mm. Wow. So, yes. Well, yesterday I had a young man who turned 18. OK, so his um, his birthday was. His birthday wasn't yesterday, but we celebrated his birthday yesterday. It was in September. Mm -hmm. So he was 18. At two 14s, we had a six, an eight, a three, a four. Um, <laughs> their family's in the shelter, you know? So we pull up. We pull up with a bouncy house, a DJ, mm -hmm. an ice cream truck, a petting zoo, cotton candy, Buzz Lightyear. Mm. We pull up with all of that because 
not only do we want to celebrate the kids that have the birthday in that month, all the kids want to go to the birthday party. Right. Remember when right. you got that invitation to go to a mm-hmm. birthday party? And he was like, oh, shit, I'm going to have birthday party. Go have some fun. Oh, hell yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to birthday party. So we pull up, and it's a party for everyone, the parents, everyone. We do it in the parking lot. The petting zoo is amazing. And shout out to Sweet Times for Life because that's my partner. Um, the petting zoo is snakes. So they bring snakes. Roosters, guinea pigs, rabbits, lizards. Um, what else? Oh, da, da, da. I mean, just it's a reptile show. Mm-hmm. And it's so amazing to see these kids for the first time touching all touching. of them. And, w- and when they do that, we talk to them about being brave. Okay. How brave you are. Mm-hmm. How you could do anything. Look at you. Look at what you just did. Oh, the snake. Oh, my God. You are so amazing. <laughs> and we just just pour into them and pour That's into them. That's big. That's huge. And pour into them. And we do it once a month. Thanks to Amy Witherwright. Man. And 1-800-TRUCK-RED. I knew you. Amy Witherwright, man. And 1-800-TRUCK-RED. Shout out. Man, yeah. thank you so She's much. Been, I've been doing this for two years. Wow. Wow. That's I mean, awesome. that yeah. looked like you, like I said, the Ray, that's your gift, man. Your gift is it basically, definitely, your voice is your gift. You, you have mm, a. That's what Steve said. Mm, 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 no, but it's true though. But yeah, yeah. You know, even voice. in the strip club, you remember I told you about that. That's why I heard your voice, and you went hard in them strip club. Dallas Cowboy South. Yeah, you yeah. was cold with that voice. You could, yeah. you could say things, and some of the it things she true. said, you can't repeat. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, a podcast. Yes, you can. <laughs> so just but like, I want to ask you So if somebody was supposed to play you in a movie Uh oh Who would you pick to play you? Kiki Palmer She she been cutting up lately I too. can Yeah She I can, can do it that. She can do it I can see She can that. do it That's what Yeah, yeah that's I can see She it. already Kiki. thought about that Kiki. That was quick No 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 She no, was no. quick I, on I had never thought about it I, that's the You first quick time with I, it That's the first time everybody asked me <laughs> Wow I swear to God That's the first you time everybody ever asked me that but you hit it. That's your. But I can see close. her playing you. Mm-hmm. I can. Yeah, that was a good choice. Okay. And she can get loud too. She got to have that personality. You got to bring it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's me. She's me. I am her. She is me. Man. Hey, Kiki. How can people get a hey, hold of you if they trying to reach out? Right. If they trying to reach out, how can they get a hold of you? Just call me seven 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 ninety three eleven. Baby, what's and your how- phone number? <laughs> You don't be getting oh, all them hey, calls. Hey, 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 you don't be getting all them She don't know. She don't know. She's too young. Oh, my. She don't know. And you're from Jamaica. That's the part. Okay, I asked him that, but not the young part. No, That's a song. It said, baby, what's your phone, phone number? And it gets down to the hook. It say, 777 I want to take some time with you. If that's all right. So you got to know. You don't know. Who sing that song? I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a hit. It was a hit. Okay. It almost, but I almost said Mars Day, but it wasn't I, 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 it. But it was during the era, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's all right. Give me your Instagram quick play. Okay, yeah, it's Vita Loca. All That's everywhere. All. Just Vita Loca. Vita Loca. V E D A L O C A. And if somebody wanted to reach out to be on your podcast, like who do you um, put on your podcast? Who would you want on your podcast? So, I'm in a stage of trying to figure out what it is all about. Okay. You know, I, and I really want to s- stay in tune with the inspirational bullshit part of it. Like, I love to inspire people to want to be better. And so, I'm just, I would look for people that want to teach people how to be better, but also be themselves while they're doing it and quit pretending. Like, you know, right. be a hot mess. But still inspire people. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, be a freak. Yeah. But still get out here and love the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Suck good dick. But but give to charity. Right. Right. <laughs> That's Vita yeah. Loca. Vita Loca is real, man. <laughs> I love this woman, man. Thank you. Inspirational you, you, you bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> but you will be coming back on the show. Don't try to make it like another it. year. It yeah. should be like it should be at least like a Your quarter. Wife got my number, Shana. Man, I forgot. No, okay, so she you know you know how it. quick I'm gonna be back? I quit. When my oxtail ready. Hey, that's good. That's it. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. The food I wasn't going to get in the car right now. I'm eating up all the oxtails.
The food bring them back, baby. Let me, tell you, tell. let me tell you, I went over to the table, right? I saw him package it up. But I thought it was empty and it was done. So I said, let me tell you, I'm throwing the trash. He said, no, 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 don't touch this. I still got some more. I still I got, got some more. Done. I can't get no more. It's done. That's Man. why you don't see me when I order it. Wow. Like, I put more. We and bring then, you and back. then my son said, Dylan said, but I'm going to place an order. <laughs> yeah, this is it right here. You got to get this here. <laughs> Oh, you gotta come you, call host one day money. too. I yeah, would love to. You gotta come call host. Yeah, we do Jay Cruz said he people. would do it too. I need to have y'all. We have yeah, different have people that yeah, we bring in. There's so much more we can talk about. We can yeah. kick it, man. That's what yeah. I, I love the fact that we bring people. God gave me y'all. I always say that the ones that come here, God gave me y'all, and I ain't playing with it. I'm bringing y'all back yeah, and every he, and time. God don't play about yeah. us. That's I'm it, about man. to start my own podcast. Do I keep saying it? But I'm working on. Everybody's telling you that it needs to be about cooking. No, 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 not that. No, I'm talking about because, relationships. This but, one, this but podcast is going to be relationships. Here's my right. mission for you. Okay. Do that. But cook while Bring you're doing the cooking, it. Yeah. Cook while you're talking about relationships. Cook while you're cook you on that your food. podcast. That food is so big. No, you yeah. cook it. I mean, that, that, that's food. a gift you have. That's a gift. Okay. That's a gift. Wow. Use your gift that God gave you and then do put mix some your own flavor in your gift. But I'm just what I see for you because you know I'm Miss Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> Call me for your free reading, no? <laughs> You're going to have to pay me for this now. You're paying me an ox out. Okay. I got you. But got you. I mean I just think that would be a, a, a visionary um up plus for you. But That's nobody awesome. could yeah. be nobody I honestly I don't think nobody be able to talk when they smell the food cooking. Yeah, you will. They gonna we'll be like, "Cause you that you, cause you that baby." Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vita, for coming on the show. I love you. We love you more. I love you. Man, listen, it's been. Let me enough. ask you one question Uh-oh. before I go. Which interview was better, me or Jay Cruz? <laughs> That's hard. No, it's not. That's hard. No, I'm not gonna not. do this. Look at this camera. I'm not doing I'm it. I'm looking at Cruz right now. I'm not it's doing not hard. it. I'm not. I it's plead not the hard. fifth. I'm not doing it. You doing hard. it? No. I love both of them. I, like, I ain't playing with y'all. I like we send it down. It's been another great segment. A boss talk one on one. What a boss's talk. And we out.